Today's lesson is on money, decimals, and place value. Our goal here is to figure out how they are related. So we have some pictures of some money and a place value chart and wondering why do we need to understand these things. So let's look at our goals. The first one, simplest, is of course to read and count money, being able to look at a certain given amount and read it off, know what bills are what, what coins are what, know that this is a penny, this is a nickel, dime, quarter, half dollar, what they look like, and then of course count them up and figure out how much money there is. Next we want to describe the value of digits from the hundreds to the millions place. So. Um, we can use this place value chart down here at the bottom um, and just of course our knowledge from remembering that. One thing to remember is the process by which we make our thinking visual or visible. Um, so we want to make sure we're making connections, connecting our knowledge that we know uh, that we already know to what we're learning as well as to situations we've been in, maybe movies we've seen, books we've read, other lessons we've learned. We want to build explanations, so we should be thinking as we're solving these um, and working through this how you could teach this to somebody and explain it to someone to demonstrate your understanding or how you could write it down. And then obviously observing and describing what's there. So uh, what, what we look at something, we want to look carefully, and then we simply want to show, uh, explain what we see using good describing words. So I'm just going to keep this nice, right? And boom, right there. All right, and then our final um, I can statement, our goal for this lesson is that you can explain how dimes and pennies relate or connect to the tenths. I know that was misspelled. I just fixed it, though. Tenths and hundredths place. So just to review, let's look at some old skills that we started out with. Um, we're just going to use our place value chart. Remember, we have our um, different periods. So this would be our ones. They call it units, but this is our ones period, then thousands period, millions period. Each period is separated by a comma. And then our decimal is going to start our new series, the tenths and the hundredths. So this would be fractions of wholes or tenths of one and hundredths of one. So my question is, how would you read this number? Go ahead and pause the video and try that out right now. So um, you've probably read 947,362,105 and 85 hundredths. That's how we would write this number. And here it is in word form, just so you could see it again, the way I would read this, something you can reflect back on, 947,362,105 and 85 hundredths. So again, this and is what we would use for a decimal, or when we get to uh, less than a whole number, we use the word and, so we never say and before then to use proper math language. Also, we notice that each series of three in the period sound the same, 947, 362, 105. But then when we're in the millions, thousands, or any place value higher, we say the period afterwards. So 947 million, because that's what this comma would represent being under the millions place. And then 362,000. And then when we get to 105, we don't say ones. We just say 105, knowing that the five is the ones. And then our, our decimal would be read as and. And then we don't say eight-tenths, five-hundredths. We would just combine these two to say 85 hundredths when saying it in number form. So now let's do some relating. We're going to relate uh, just a section of this number here. We're just going to take these, 5 and 85 hundredths. If we were to take 5 and 85 hundredths and translate that into money, to do that we would of course write our dollar sign. Money has to have our dollar sign. I use just an S and two lines the same size as the whole number there, so a big S with two lines as my dollar sign. Computers will often do it with one line, but we have two. 
Then I would write my $5, and then my decimal point would separate my whole bills. So up here it separates my whole numbers. In this case, it would be my, my bills and my cents. So when we are dealing with numbers and money, obviously I can use coin combinations here to make 85, but for right now we're just going to look at the tenths place and the hundredths place. So in our place value chart, the hundredths over here would be represented by pennies, and the tenths would be represented by dimes, just keeping it simple. Um, now obviously we could use you know three quarters and dime, but we're going to stick with tenths. Now why are dimes tenths? I, I would pause the video and see if you could explain this out loud. You need to be able to understand why dimes are called tenths and why they represent the tenths place. So my explanation might include something like, well, it takes ten dimes to equal one dollar and so each dime is one-tenth of a dollar. And therefore, we call them tenths because if I had one, I would have one-tenth. If I had four, I would have four-tenths. If I had eight, I would have eight-tenths. And that would be eight dimes in my money coin. Now, pennies we call hundredths. Why don't you pause the video now and see if you can explain why we call pennies hundredths. We call pennies hundredths because it takes 100 pennies to equal a dollar. If I had five pennies, I would have five hundredths or five cents. If I had 85 pennies, which of course could be made with eight dimes and five pennies, but let's say I carried around 85 pennies, I would still only have 85 cents and not a hundred, and therefore not a dollar yet. But since a hundred pennies makes up a dollar, we call them hundredths. So when we look at place value charts, just to the right of the decimal, we can think of dimes being in the tenths place. And then we can think of pennies being in the hundredths place. So when I look at 85 cents, I know I have eight dimes and five pennies. And to connect the ones place with where it is next to the decimal, this would be $1 bills. So the ones place would represent $1 bills, the tenths place would represent dimes, and the hundredths place would represent pennies. So I can always remember this when reading numbers or counting money. So technically I would have $5, 8 dimes and 5 pennies, or $5.85. So let's now that we've talked about counting money up and relating it to the tenths and the hundredths with pennies and dimes, let's look at the value of these numbers. If I wanted to simply start with the value of a specific digit like this, 9. And this was a money amount or not a money amount, just a number, 947,362,105 and 85 hundredths. I would have to say that this 9 is worth a certain amount. True, it's in the 100 millions place, but that's not its value. That's simply what it would be called, just like this 5. This is in the 1's place. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that the value of this 5 is 1's. The value would be 5 1's, or 5. So what would the value of this 9 be right here? Well, it's in the 100 millions, so I would say that it's worth 900 million. And I don't need the decimals since I'm just describing value. What about the value of this 7? Well, I would put the 7 down, and I would say that, that 7 is worth 7 millions because it's in the millions place. So if all I had was this digit, I would still have 7 million. That's not bad at all. I could look at this 6. This 6 is in the 10 thousands place, but that's not its value. No, no, its value, or what it's worth, would be worth 60,000. So a couple keys that we've pointed out is we've noticed the pattern that I simply take the digit and I put the place, I, I write it down, and then every other digit just becomes a zero in the whole number place values. I don't include decimals with value unless I'm doing the value of tenths and hundredths. So the 7 came right on down, and then all the other digits became 0, kind of like rounding.
when I'm looking at value. So let's just say that this represents hundredths because a hundred of the squares, like pennies, would be filled in to equal one whole box. So the whole box is one, or one dollar bill, or one whole, and then each box represents one hundredth of the total, or um, a penny, or a hundredth. And this box, of course, would represent tenths. So you can see that these lines going across, these gaps here, this, there's ten of them. One, two, three, four, there's ten of the gaps that would equal the one whole. So both of them are based on the same size whole, but they're just fractions or pieces of the whole. So we could say that this box represents dimes, and this would be pennies. So if I had five hundredths, that means I would only have five of those blocks filled in. So I might get my coloring piece and color in like this and say, okay, now I've got five hundredths filled in like so, and even better, I could use um, I can use a highlighter here, and you can really see how I do that. So a highlighter lets me fill in five. So that's five hundredths. And then I would have um, eight tenths, it looks like. So I would fill in eight of those tenths, like this. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So eight tenths, right about there. So I've got 85 filled out. So I haven't got a hole yet. Um, I could also just fill in 85 hundredths. So that would be something like this. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that would be the same amount as well. 